Hello, good people, and welcome to Finest Skills Hub. Here, we learn, we connect, and we grow. If you've been analyzing data in Excel for a while, you are probably used to keeping all your columns or fields in one big wide table. The problem with this is as your data grows large, it may end up with performance issues. So in this video, we are going to look at a better way to structure your data. This is called normalized data or normalizing your data. We are going to learn how to use Power Query to achieve this, to give you better analysis and performance as your data grows. So join me in Excel and let's go through this in a few minutes. So we start off with this sales data. If you look at this data closely, you realize I have about 16 columns. Okay. And if I go down, I have about 662 rows. Now, the user wants to see all these columns because of the analysis he wants to do probably in a pivot table. If I multiply 662, okay, by the number of columns I have, it means I'm using 10,592 cells to do my analysis. Not all these cells are required. Now, if you look closely, you realize that a column like country has Ghana repeated 662 times, okay? This is what we call data redundancy. You are repeating the same data in different points of your table or data set. We can avoid this because when your data grows very large, it can lead to performance issues. Now, there are three things that data redundancy causes. The first one is that if you have a new record, let's say this customer comes in to buy. Anytime you are recording for this customer, you are forced to repeat these details of the customer as many times as the customer's details is recorded. You don't need this. This is called insertion anomaly. The second issue is that if you are supposed to delete some parts of your data, you end up taking away the entire record. Maybe you don't need to delete the product details for this transaction. So this also leads to a second problem called deletion anomaly. A third problem that data redundancy causes is if let's say you have to update, so let's say font tablets is not having an underscore and then you have to replace this. You have to go to each instance and replace, probably using find and replace. But usually you may miss one or two and then you end up creating another type of font tablet. So data redundancy is not the best way to keep data. And the best way to keep data is to keep it in what we call normalized data. What is normalized data or data normalization? It is a process of breaking that big wide table into small related tables. Okay, so we are going to use Power Query to achieve this. And before we do that, let's take all the columns that we have in this table. I can easily do that by using transpose. I'll call the name of my table and then call the headers. And then I'll close my square bracket and then that gives me the list. This is a spelled array, so Control C, Control Alt V, and then I'll paste over this to have my columns. Now, if you look at these columns, you realize that some of the columns are related. So as an example, if I have customer ID, I can use customer ID to get customer name and customer segment. So let's say I color this um, blue, and then the same with location, I can use city, to fetch the country the city is in and then the region is in. So here, I'm going to color this yellow and then I can also use product ID to fetch product category, product subcategory and product name. And let's color this probably green. So what it means is that instead of keeping customer name and customer segments, these secondary columns in the same table, I can actually create a small lookup table. So let's say I'm going to cut this and then paste this here okay and if I need details of the customer I can use this customer ID okay in the original table to fetch or look up these details so let's do same for city so all this is location data I can paste this here but here I need to leave the city field or column in here okay so that I can use it to reference this part and then finally I can do same for product ID and then here I can also leave the product ID 
over here okay and use it to fetch whatever details I need on product so when you do this kind of arrangement whatever is left in the original transactions table is what represents your fact table okay so I have row ID you realize that these columns cannot relate to any other and that is why they are here and they are also joined by the column that contains my values so I can now take this and then paste this here so I can now break the big white table into these four tables and achieve the same thing and reduce the data redundancy that is the repetition of details how do we achieve this you can use power query to get the same arrangement we call these tables dimension tables the ones giving us further and better details and the one that records our transactions the fact table so to achieve this in power query i can stand in this table go to data and then load this table into power query so we know power query is used to transform and clean data after you can load it now the reason we are using power query is not to transform the big white table but to help us change the table into four small tables when we are done we'll disconnect the power query so that it's not linked to the main table so we have our power query here you can choose to reference or duplicate so i'm going to um, duplicate this four times the duplication or referencing will not matter here because they are going to be disconnected tables so with these four tables i'm going to name this first one my fact table okay and then i'll name this my customers table and then i'll name this my location table and then name this last one my product table and i'm going to work on these tables so with my facts table when i come to choose columns it lists all the columns in my original table you realize that we said i can use customer id to fetch customer name and customer segment so this will not be needed same with city i can take off country and region with product id i can take off product category product subcategory product name and i'll leave off sales so whatever is left off will now represent the transaction that i will record when the customer walks in without the details when i come to my customers i have my customers here this is just going to be a lookup table for customers so i'll uncheck all my columns and then retain customer id customer name customer segment so these three are going to give me details of my customers i'll click ok now with these dimension tables or lookup tables we don't need duplicates so i'm going to highlight and then remove duplicates why because tell them add those details should appear once we don't need a repetition for that same with location so again i'm going to choose location and then unselect all and then choose city country and region to represent location and then i'll click ok then i'll press ctrl a to remove duplicates and then finally i'm going to do same for my product id so i'll come to choose columns uncheck all the columns here choose product id with the details i need with my product id i'll click ok and then i'm going to remove my duplicates okay so i now have these three dimension tables and then my facts table now i'm going to close and load to and then i'm going to add this to the data model and then break this into four small tables so i'm going to click ok and what it's going to do is it will now create these four tables and put it in the data model now in the data model what we are going to do is to connect the tables in such a way that we can have access to all the tables and give it to one pivot table so here i have my four tables if you like i can delete the original table and these tables are now in the power pivot okay so my power pivot tab is here and when i go to manage i now see my fact table and my three dimension tables if i go to your diagram view you realize that i have my fact 
customers location and products right here so i'm going to place my fact table down here and then i'm going to connect so with this connection it means that i can now have access to all the details that i need so i'm going to start off with customer id we should connect to customer id here so with this connection it means i can easily have access to this detail i'll connect city to city and the reason i'm using city and customer id is that in the hierarchy they represent the least level of granularity it means with them or with that field or column i can get access to the rest that is how the structure is and then i'll connect product id to this okay so with this arrangement what it means is that i can now create a pivot table out of these four tables and this will make my work easy now remember that we use power query to transform these tables so that we don't connect it to the original table we can unlink these okay so i'm going to unlink these so i'll come here and then unlink this one as well come here and then unlink this as well and then i'll come here and then unlink this as well so i've now rendered these as input tables i can edit without any connection to the original table now if i want to do my pivot table analysis from here okay i can stand in any blank sheet and then insert a pivot table from the data model that i created so i'll place it in this existing worksheet and now when i come here you realize that i have all my four tables here so i can come to my fact table and then analyze sales okay let's say by product subcategory push this into rows even though they are sitting in different tables i still have access to these so now if i come to my original fact table and i need to record something here okay i can make that record and then just use the customer id the city and then the product these three okay in the facts table i don't now have to repeat all the details that come with this and i can get the same analysis done because now these tables are connected it's a better way to store data especially when your data is going to grow large at a point please practice and add it to your list of excel tricks If this video was helpful and you would like to receive more of these videos directly on your WhatsApp, you can send ad to this WhatsApp number. We'll add you to our broadcast list so you receive our videos directly. You can also visit our YouTube channel, Finest Skills Hub. All our old videos are here. Please subscribe for notification of new videos or connect with us on any of these social media handles. Thank you so much for watching.